Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second installment of our IT series, How to Use IT Help Desk in 365, and showing what the Crocanian Help Desk looks like. My name is James Restivo from Crocanian Software, uh, and today we're going to talk about the ticket processing side of things, how to make things a little automated, a little easier for when you actually process tickets when they come into the system. So just to recap really quick, for those who might not have seen it or been the last week's webinar, we talked about how tickets are entered into the system. And there's various ways to do that. Just to recap really briefly, there's an option for those to be emailed into the system. There's the option for the user to interact with the employee portal. We have the link up here for that and show you what that looks like. So they can enter a ticket through the portal, or they could, uh, there's also an option with Teams if they are, if you're using three, um, uh, Microsoft Teams, there's a Teams app, uh, we call it Nitro, what we're gonna rebrand is to call it Nitro Engage. Uh, so it's a, a way for your users to interact as, you know, search a knowledge base before they enter a ticket, or they could uh, just directly enter the ticket. Yeah, you know, how did they do it? But anyway, there's a number of different ways the ticket gets into the system. And then from that point forward, what happens? Okay, so that's where today's discussion is going to come into play. And I think most folks are joined on, but we'll have this recorded and we'll have this available for uh, viewing afterwards. Uh, so again, thank you for joining. Uh, and let's just go ahead and get right into the, the meat of the webinar today. You know, there's meant to be kind of quick half hour, snippets of what's going on with our IT help desk. So we'll just go right into it uh, so we don't have a lot of time. Uh, but, there is, but there's a lot you can do with the ticket processing side of things, right? So it comes into the system and then what do you do with it? So when you look at our ticket form, and let's take a look at one of these uh, tickets that we, we have here in this list. There's a number of things on there that can help you categorize a ticket, help you dr drive it in the right direction, maybe drive what the response should be. Uh, so there's a number of things on the ticket itself. So first of all, before you even get to this point where you're seeing on the screen right now, the user's already received an email. They've already received a confirmation that the ticket's been received into the system. So that's already going on. And I'll show you where that is in our system. And you can see there's a few different types of notifications. And that's part of the ticket processing, obviously, is to communicate with the end user what's going on with their ticket. Where are they in the process? What's the status? They'll want to know all that stuff. So they can do it through the portal. They, they can go look at the ticket that they've submitted and see what the status is there, of course. Uh, but you could also choose to send out notifications as it goes through the process. And that's, that's where we um, are going to talk about a little bit today. First of all, you notice that there's a way to categorize and uh, uh, categorize the ticket. We have a category and an issue type. That can actually, when you get this set up, can actually help you drive your process for the ticket automation. So it could even be uh, different types of notifications that go out based on the category and issue type. There could be different people assigned to the ticket based on category and issue type. If you look over here at the staff tab, you'll see that there's an assigned team field. There's an assigned staff field. These are the folks who will get notified or can get notified that a ticket is in their name that they need to go and refer to it. So we don't have time to go through all the ins and outs of those things, but just want to show you that those, uh, the, you know, the, through the category, through the issue type, you can auto assign these things. That's going to send, again, send out a notification to your end user that it has been assigned and that they can uh, pick it up and, and respond to the user and or you know resolve the ticket where uh, you're just going to work on it and resolve it whatever that that means for that type of ticket another thing they could do when, once this gets assigned to the user and i'm actually going to pop out of here and show you something we call the staff workspace where this is going to be your users who are working the tickets a place to kind of live uh, and see what is coming through the system for them so they'll see tickets assigned to themselves right here in the my ticket screen there's also going to be links over to tasks or and or unassigned tickets that they can then go and assign to themselves. They'll also see some metrics about what's going on with their tickets assigned to them. How many are open in particular categories? How many are open by status? And how many have they been closing by month? So all those metrics, you know, as we build this out, you know, this demo was uh, put in place back in March 2022. So you see just the last three months there. Um, but that's, you know, that kind of information would be as you go along, as you use the system, it'll be built out and, and added to as you as you do this. Um, but you'll see that there's uh, 
you know, ticket here, it gets assigned to the, you know, right now it's being assigned to this admin account, which I'm logged in as right here as admin account. So I'm going to get a notification that says that this ticket comes to me. Now, as the person working this ticket, what do I do with it? Well, it depends what type of ticket it is. Obviously, you're going to have all sorts of different types of requests coming through and how you manage those and how you handle those is going to be, uh, you know, variable based on what type of, of, of ticket comes in. But that's where you can have the send email option up here for communication. Let's say you want to send notification back to the user to ask them more questions. Or commonly what happens is you get you know, a lot of password reset emails, like how do I reset my password? Well, you can actually create a template in here, and that's one of the cool things about it, is that you can create a template that has uh, a link to reset their password. And I did set this up just before the webinar, so uh, it looks like it's not quite coming through. Uh, but let me go over to that tickets list. I'll show you that there's a way to do it. You can build it out with a lot more information than I've put in here, but yes, there's a reset password um, mail template. I just kind of click over here to show you what that looks like. Yeah, just, just simple as that. You know, ticket comes in, uh, and this could be a, a whole string of text. This could also be sort of a you know, sort of like a knowledge base in a sense, or you can have them link over to the knowledge base and say, oh, you know, I think your issue will be resolved. We'll go look, go search the knowledge base and, and click over there. So if they didn't want to go through that process initially, you can send them through that process now to go and look at what they, uh, the knowledge base to see if there's anything that can help them in that knowledge base uh, area. And we'll talk more about the knowledge base when we get into it. But this is, you know, again, you can have multiple templates here for different types of common solutions or common issues that come in with, with a common solution to those issues. You can create these templates, any number of templates, and that can be uh, part of the mail that goes back. Now, it might be hard to build that in as an automation just because there are so many differentiations to it, but there is a way to build in some automation to what goes to the end user. And I'll show you that when we talk about the workflows in about um, you know, five to 10 minutes here, we'll talk about the workflow piece of it where you can build out your own sort of notification processes outside of what we have out of the box. Um, but yeah, so you can you know, send an email to the user. You might have uh, a good response that says, oh, I need to do this, or, or um, you know, here's a screenshot, here's more information about the issue I'm reporting. A lot of that's going to be shown through the email history. So if you have that email, uh, ongoing email communication with the user and you have it going through the system, you'll see an email history in there of what is uh, being talked about. That can be referenced by anyone coming in looking at the system. So the assigned staff can see it. Anyone else can see it. Managers can see it. That way you get a sense of where it is in the process. Someone comes in, um, you know, someone comes in and uh, you know, the, the, someone's new, someone's out for the week, and they got to pick up someone else's tickets. Well, now they have that email history of what's been going on without having to go and search through their own email inbox to figure it out. So they got that kind of parsed out and, and separated over here to see it. So that's a nice way to do it. Also, if there's any tasks, you'll see there's if there's anything that needs to be addressed by other groups in your staff that aren't part of your set or, you know, they're, they're coming into your IT help desk, but maybe they're not nor your typical IT help desk staff, or normally they don't work tickets, or even just someone's an expert in a particular area, you know, it's me, you can go and say, okay, this task needs to go to our subject matter expert over here. They're going to handle it, and then they can go and close that task, and then, uh, you know, th through uh, uh, you know, other processes, through workflows and whatnot, you can see, you know, maybe even close the, the ticket automatically when all the tasks are completed, or, you know, there's ways you can do that. Um, but you see there's also ways that they can track their time in here, so you get that time tracking element when you're processing through the system as well. Now, again, there's so many different ways you can go with when, when you get the ticket in, you know, how, what, uh, how do you handle it? it? It really depends on what the issue is. But we're giving you the tools here to manage all those different types of processes in various ways. You know, sending automated emails, sending uh, manual emails, uh, doing, uh, you know, tracking everything through a work log, tracking things through this email history, through the associated tasks, all that stuff really just serves to keep everyone informed on what's communi being communicated, what's been communicated, what needs to be communicated. All that is is part of the ticket process for resolving the issue. And of course, there's the actual work to be done to actually resolve the issue, and you can put that in the work log. You can take notes. 
And when all is said and done, we have a resolution field on here that you can go and mark how is this issue resolved, uh, what was the type of resolution, maybe get some more information in there about how, you know, what, what was the actual steps involved to resolve it. That can come from the work log, you can copy and paste it into here. But the nice thing about this too is that you can, when, once you do resolve it, once you do close this ticket, uh, you can create a knowledge base article out of it. So you can build up that 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 key B that you have. If you don't have it fully built up right out of the gate, that's fine. It does take time to build those things. You get questions that come in that you might not be aware were going to be questions <laughs> from people sometimes. Uh, you'd be amazed at what people can ask or get confused about. Uh, I'm sure not this group here, but <laughs> it is really surprising. But you know, for anything that comes through, you can create a knowledge base article that, that can then be searched and referenced and and you know, at the end of the process, you can create a new one out of the ticket that came in. Now, I want to show you over here too that there's some standard notifications that are going through the system for uh, the process, and we we built like four out of the box ones that we think are going to hit most of the most of the situations. There could be other situations where you want to add to this, and that's fine. I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Uh, but what I want to show you is the notifications area here, where you can send out a notification when a ticket gets created. So we have that built into the system anytime a ticket is created. Again, this can be toggled. And that's a great thing about our solution is that you have a way to toggle whether this does this sends an email or not. If you wanted to do a different process or you didn't want to email the user, there's other ways to do it. Uh, but we give you the option in here to have this go out automatically. Ticket gets created. User gets an email with this template. You got all these rich text controls so you can make it look the way you want it to look. And then uh, if you want to notify staff members when that ticket gets created, you can do that as well. Typically, we would notify the staff when the assi assignment happens, but you may have situations where you want particular individuals, especially if it's a certain type of category of ticket coming in. You may want a, a group like an assigned team or a certain individual to be notified of that ticket whenever it gets created, not just assigned, but also when it first hits the system. Uh, of course, this is all you know proactive notification. Anyone can come into the the tool and refresh the list anytime they want and see what what tickets are coming through. But this is all about proactive you know notification, proactively alerting people to something going on in the system. So we've got the notification when it goes out to the uh, requester when it first comes in. We got a notification when it gets assigned. Uh, so it's going to look very similar to what we just looked at. It's got a template for the user, a template for the assigned staff. Uh, it's also got some built-in uh, built-in stuff in here for when the ticket gets reassigned. If it's assigned to a different individual, you can get notifications when it's uh, assigned to someone else. Uh, and then, so all that's in there. But again, you got a couple different templates to work with. And you get, you're going to have a similar type of thing when the ticket is closed or when uh, it takes reactivated and there's also this concept of resolution where the end user has to confirm that the issue is resolved or closed whereas the technician is is going to resolve it and not actually close it um, we can get into that in detail if you want to get talk about this this uh, help desk in, in more detail but essentially there's uh, that process where you can differentiate between a resolution of the, the the technician saying I've resolved the issue versus the end user confirming that it was resolved. So we do have that process in here. Um, and just a quick note and categorization before we get into the workflow piece of it is, you know, I mentioned early on, but you can have these auto assignments based on when a ticket comes in based on a category and issue type. So let's say you wanted to notify a category owner and or an assigned team when a up when these categories comes in, we have those fields on here. You just fill them out with who needs to be assigned or who needs to be uh, notified, and that will be in here. And we also have that same scenario for issue type. When ticket comes in, it's got a particular issue type on it. Okay, now go assign it to this person or these people, actually. The assigned staff can have multiple people in it. So you can that, that way you can control your flow, control who gets what uh, tickets, and if you ever need to rebalance, there's ways to reassign as well, right? So you can, if you get a bunch of issue types, uh, a bunch of a certain type of issue type all assigned to one or two people, uh, and you want to rebalance that load in your system, there's ways to do that with a reassignment. Uh, you'll see we have that on uh, any of these tickets here. There's ways to uh, reassign. And you know, through some of these automated processes, which we call custom actions, 
Um, we also have workflows as well, which I'll show you. There's a self-assign. If your ticket's not already assigned, you can go ahead and assign it to yourself. There's all there's an assign to someone else option. Uh, and then if ultimately, if you find you need to escalate this to a problem, which is a way to bring multiple tickets into one uh, one thing, you create a problem ticket that can bring together multiple tickets into one place. Once that problem ticket gets resolved, then you can uh, close out the tickets related to it. Uh, it can also be used for scenarios where you have to spend more time resolving the issue and you can create the problem ticket and gives you a little more of a workspace to work on that particular problem to resolve it. Ultimately, that might result in a change request. So we do have that process in here to uh, to create a change request from a ticket. So as you go through the ticket management process, there's a lot, you know, a few different ways, do a few different things and a few different branches you can take with it to go in these different directions. But what also what I wanted to show you was a way that you can create your own ways to send out notifications. And we get this one a lot about how do you send out a notification when the work log is updated. Now we didn't put that in as an out-of-the-box notification. I think we will in the next version that gets rolled out of this help desk help desk. But in the meantime, it's actually really easy to set up that note that type of notification. So you want to, basically the scenario is you want to update the end user whenever the work log is updated. That work log field we're looking at, that's going to be visible on the portal. That's going to be visible in here. Your staff can work on it. Your the end user can put notes in it as well. It's another way to communicate if you don't want to use email, another possibility. But if you wanted to send a notification when that gets update, updated, uh, there's a way to do that. And we do that through our Nitro workflows. So Nitro workflows is a tool you're going to find in our uh, administrative area. You can go to the Crookhand Nitro apps and I have that open over here, actually right here, over here. And there's Nitro workflows right here. So I do have it popped open on this uh, uh, tab already. So I'm just going to jump over there. And in here, you can create, you know, we've all built a number of out of the box workflows here um, for, you know, setting permissions on knowledge base, which uh, we, you can add in if you don't have those already. Uh, there's some other things in here we built up for, um, you know, working with the Teams app and all that. Um, but specifically for the work log, what we can do is create a new workflow. And we're going to put this on the tickets list because that's our main list that we're working with. I'm going to use the designer. I'm going to use it when an item is modified. And that's going to allow you to set a condition for when the ticket is modified and only when this work log changes, then we send a notification. Now, of course, you could ex expand that concept to other fields on your, your ticket form. Um, but ultimately, you can come in here and say, okay, anytime work log equals after changing. So this is kind of a special syntax we have in here for this. Uh, it's not too crazy. We don't have too much, too many areas of crazy syntax in here. Um, that's just one of them where you get, you know, work log, anytime it's changed, then we're going to do something. So hit OK on that. And then we're going to drag and drop our send mail action. So that's going to be our notification that goes out when that work log is updated. And we just can go in here and say work log updated. We can create a mail template, and it looks like we already have one there, so we might already have this workflow, but I just want to show you if you don't, you can set it up pretty easily. And if you want to edit that template, you can cl click in there, edit that. It's going to tell you, okay, your ticket's been updated with the work log. It's got the case ID, the title. And again, being a template with all these rich text controls, you can insert pictures, you can make it, uh, um, you know, play around with the font, play around with the colors, whatever you need to do. Um, but you can do all that with the mail template that goes out for that work log update. So we do that, we're going to, who's it going to go to? Well, it's going to go to the requester. So you can dynamically choose who it's going to based on that requester field on the tickets list. And who it comes from, well, typically you'll have like a help desk at whatever.com uh, or you can use a no reply uh, .com, yeah, at sharepointonline.com yeah, or sharepoint.com. Whatever you want to do in here, the, the from address is fine. And then we save that and that's it. That's really it. I mean, you just publish that and you're good to go. If you wanted to add in some other conditions, we could do that where, you know, say we're created by or um, modified. Uh, let's see, where is it? Modified does not equal. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see, current, I think you can do current user. I'll have to look this up. I'm not sure if this is the exact syntax, but actually you can do it like this. You do um, where it's not equal to the created person. Uh, by. Yeah, this is going to be modified by actually. Yeah, not equal. To, okay. Created by. Right, so that allows you to exclude the updates when the person updating the work log is uh, the, the person who created the ticket. But so there's different ways you can do that. You can do something like this. You can do where it's um, you know modified by the only when it's modified by the assigned staff. Uh, you know different ways are li like that. And modify is not equal to or requester actually is probably a better one. So requester. So something like that. So that, that means, yeah, again, work log anytime it changes, modified by does not equal the requester. That means that the person who's modifying it is not the person who made the request. Because if the person requesting it makes the update, then you know they know they made the update. Do they really need a notification? Well, you can if you want, but that just gives you a way to exclude that scenario. Uh, so Real simple, we can add in some other things if you want to make an update to it, update a status field, update uh, a different kind of field, update time tracking. We can do all that from uh, these these workflows. And you can see there's a ton of different things here. And we'll get more into this as we talk about how Nitro powers your help desk. Uh, this is part of it. This is part of the Nitro tool set that helps to power what your help desk is doing uh, with the forms, with the workflows, with uh, notifications like this. It's all really gives you a good way to extend your, your system beyond the out-of-the-box uh, tool set. But um, and it's one quick uh, one I wanted to show you there with the work log update. If there's any others you want to see, we do have that questions box in the uh, GoToWebinar panel if you wanted to uh, ask a question about oh, how do I handle this scenario with the help desk or how do I handle uh, this situation or how do I build a workflow for that. We can talk about that if we can't get to it on today's uh, webinar, we can follow up with you afterwards for sure um, uh, to to address those questions that you have. Uh, but feel free if there's anything in there that you want to address specifically, you know, go ahead, please put some, some comments or questions in there. But you know, it's all said and done. We can go ahead and arc log. Oops. Create our. Uh, go ahead and create this. From the whole publishing so when you're all said and done publish and you're good to go and you can close out of that and now that becomes a workflow we can always refer back to as needed modify as needed and uh you know uh, make it better make it different um, but that's where the automation is going to come into play so all these different options for automation um there we go there we go there it is updating work log so we got all these different options for automation when items are updated, items are created, items, uh, we do have scheduled queries in here. Well, again, like I said, we'll deal in, dig into this in a little more, probably a little more depth in, in the, uh, uh, when we talk about how Nitro powers your help desk, but it, it's really cool. There's so much cool things in here that you can do with it, and it really helps to automate things with uh, sending out updates, sending out, uh, updating due dates perhaps, or sending out notifications when a due date is coming due. That's where a lot of these workflow notifications are going to come from uh, in, in that process, in that place. All right, great. So we got a few minutes left here. Uh, let's see, we have, uh, let's see if we have any questions. All right, cool to have templates linked to category and issue type, just like knowledge base. Okay, templates, um, <clears throat> I might have to follow up with that individual afterwards and find the, uh, which, oh, the templates for the, uh, the email templates, I think is what they're referring to. Um, yeah, uh, that would be good. Right now we have it as kind of a, a open-ended. You can choose whichever template for whichever scenario you want. Uh, that way you're not restricted. Um, and a lot of times what happens is people will submit a ticket in that they they think they know what the category and issue type should be, uh, but they don't. I mean, it might be the wrong one or might not be quite accurate. So, you know, just uh, something to think about if we were wanted to go down, go down that route of limiting which email templates are available at a given time. There is that concern that the actual category and issue type selected by the user are not correct. 
but you can get around that by obviously you know selecting your own category issue type or we've had some uh, uh some customers who've asked us to just you know let, let the help desk staff do it um, that does take away some of the automation piece of it but it does it, it's a possibility as well so again that's the level of flexibility we have in making it work the way you want it to work to fit to your processes you're not having to re-engineer how you're doing things uh, to to work with our system, we we typically try to re-engineer our system to work with your your process. Uh, that being said, there probably could be some areas you know that that uh, you want to take a look at. I mean, this has uh, been you know well designed from hundreds and you know, thousands of customers really who've hammered on this help desk over the years, and you know we've taken the feedback and made it you know better, added things that where it needs to be added. So very mature product, but it gives a lot of flexibility in what you need to do with it. Um, but yeah, so that was it. Just wanted to cover over that 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 process today of the email of the uh, notifications, the ticket processing, what happens when you go through the system, and when basically when that ticket comes in, what happens next, and that's that's what we wanted to cover today. So I hope you got that out of here today. And uh, if you have again any questions, any follow up questions, feel free to shoot an email. We're always happy to answer. Uh, you know, talk to you, have a conversation. Uh, but again, appreciate your time today, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.